Alright, so in this video I wanted to discuss renewing Paragon rank 11, uh, why you might want to, how you would do it as a solo player with no friends, no clan, um, on LFG only, um, and uh, the Master Salvation's Edge raid because that's basically where the challenge was, that's what it came down to for me. Now uh, Guardian ranks were introduced when, with the f I think with the final, or um, with Lightfall right um, and originally it was just kind of like a whatever mechanic has been part of the game not too many people were all that interested in it but some people were were very much so um, and in a way it's kind of like showing off your uh, your triumph score in more of a streamlined manner right but obviously you have to complete certain challenges to attain that guardian rank um, and I didn't really pay much attention to it just because I like playing the game the way I wanted to play the game. I didn't really care about, I still don't care about triumphs. Um, I don't really even care about titles. Um, as you can see here, I don't have, uh, I hardly have any titles. I definitely don't go for like the uh, seasonal or the festival, festivity ones from Evil Levante. Uh, I go for the dungeon ones because that's, you know, the bread and butter of my content, and uh, I just really enjoy all the challenges in the dungeons. I like the dungeons, I like the gameplay, uh, I like the way Bungie's created them. Um, and then I ended up eventually getting a Crota Zen title um, through LFG. I got the Swordbearer title just because I really enjoyed the raid, and I basically played um, that entire season. I was all about Crota Zen, like, that was pretty much all I was doing, right? Um, and then, uh, yeah, so basically what happened was uh, I ended up just being like one challenge. Like every now and then I would just check this. Uh, I would check my um, my rank progress here because it would be flashing, right? You know, like I wasn't paying attention to what my rank was. But things flashing in my menu is, is always kind of, uh, you know, annoying or alluring depending how you how you want to look at it so i'll just go and i just take off whatever was done i never never paid attention uh to what i was actually doing to get those done it's just like oh stuff is done i'll just click it off right i was already soloing dungeons because that's what i like to do so it just turned out that i was like i hardly had to do anything to become a, a rank 11 just because i played the game the way i wanted to play right this was this was before the final shape so um then obviously once you get that rank 11 from season to season you just have to renew it which is pretty straightforward it's like do the latest uh dungeon or raid on master difficulty okay fine uh, you know crow design i was enjoying doing it anyways so that just got done automatically warlord's ruin obviously i'm going to do that because i wanted the title um, and i enjoy the dungeons like i said however uh with the final shape and salvation's edge this represented the first major skill check for me as a solo LFG player in his 40s um, that does not have the reaction time of uh, you know of a, of a young speedrunner in his teens or 20s that can super easily dodge the witnesses' attacks. Um, this was the first major skill check for me, right, for my age and for being a solo player. Um, so basically, um, I was putting off doing any master level stuff involving Salvation's Edge um, and, until I realized that my rank 11 was not going to be renewed uh, if I left this challenge here uh, 
Where is it? Salvation's Edge Mastery, right? This was literally the only thing all season long, pretty much, that was left unticked. Um, and I was basically just thinking, oh, whatever, I'll just, you know, I don't care. Um, but it would mean that I would go back down to a rank 10 next season. And why would that matter? So why does rank 11 even matter to some people, right? Well, for me, as a solo LFG player, being a Paragon allows me access to uh, a lot of Fireteam Finder posts. Uh, people will prioritize you if you've got not only like a solo flawless emblem uh, for a dungeon on, right? Uh, but also if you're rank 11, that kind of goes to show that you can uh, hold, hold yourself um, you can hold up in end game content just fine, right? Even carry teams to a certain degree. People even ask me for advice, uh, just because just because of the fact that I'm a rank 11, right? This is more noticeable. This is a more noticeable accomplishment to a wider range of guardians than a solo flawless dungeon emblem. Like a lot of people don't even know what the emblem is, right? But they know what an 11 is. Um, and so normally this wouldn't matter that much uh, to a lot of people. Like look at some of the top. Uh, Destiny players in the world, right? Speedrunner, speedrunners, world record holders, world's first raiders. They're, uh, you know, rank five, rank six. It doesn't matter because they have the notoriety of being, um, being top tier players, right? Like guardian rank is a joke to them. But for me, um, as a solo player in his 40s, uh, using LFG, um, look, I'm not a speedrunner. I'm not one of the best players in the world, but I can. Um, if I can be a rank 11, that goes to show that at least I know enough about the game to uh, to play the game at uh, at the highest end, right? Uh, so for me, for personal reasons, uh, for my channel, I like to, uh, since I've accomplished this rank 11, I, I, I kind of want to hold on to it, right? I want those Soul of Flawless Dungeon Emblems, and I want, uh, you know, I want the status, obviously. So it came down to Salvation's Edge, and I realized, well, I'm finally, I'm, I'm just going to have to buck up and learn to uh, learn to hold myself uh, up against the witness. You know, get those get those dodges, dodges attacks, get the DPS down, and I still was not very good uh, with my Titan at DPS, right? And believe me, like joining Fireteam Finder posts, especially on Master Difficulty, you're going to get kicked. I got kicked. Right? I wasn't doing enough damage. I was dying too much. I was holding teams back. Um, so this was like my last couple weeks of experience. And sure, I do have friends that I can, like on my friends list, people that have uh, come to my channel uh, and wanted to connect with me in game. Some people have. Uh, and I'm sure some people would be you know, more than willing to help me out. But I've realized that there's actually something valuable um, that I can share through my channel about LFG. Uh, and doing these things, right? If, if I can do it, anybody can do it, I think. Um, so I kind of like uh, to have that going for my channel to share the LFG experience. So I stubbornly did all of Master Salvation's Edge finally and got my rank 11 renewed uh, on LFG. Right? So that's what I wanted to talk about a little bit more here. Now, uh, I'll go over a couple tips, but uh, if you want to learn more about completing the first encounter and the third encounter with challenge by the way I have videos on my channel for both of those encounters uh, because I enjoy the first and third encounter they're relatively easy for me um, the challenges aren't super difficult and uh, this is a good way to get adept loot right that's the primary purpose of, uh, of, of those videos and uh, I have consistently farmed the first and third encounters whenever they're in weekly rotation so that I can get it at least three adept weapons, right? During those weeks, do it once on each character. Uh, you get adept weapons with six perks. That's the same thing as having like nine rolls in one weapon, right? So, I mean, that's like having 27 different rolls per week if you can do those challenges, right? Um, so yeah, check the channel for the first and third encounter. A little, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, Herald, the Witness, and uh, and Verity, right? So the builds I use, etc. So let me go on to the Witness first because I actually uh, spent the majority of the last two weeks trying to defeat the Witness, and I I honestly didn't think it was going to happen. I thought I was going to be extremely humbled and have to go into the next season back down to rank 10. But um, I wasn't very good with my Titan 
So I figured, what can I do to stop getting kicked from LFG um, and, and and be, you know, provide my team with 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 some kind of support, right? So this is what I did. I ended up uh, I ended up, of course, just naturally getting the witness CP. Um, just from you know from wiping which is common even if you're in like a top tier team you're still gonna wipe right it's usually not a first try one and done type of thing so I got CP and then I figured you know what I'm just gonna see if I can get some good karma to come my way um, so what I did was I just uh, for a few days on the LFG app and Fireteam Finder I just started giving away the checkpoint right uh, people are looking for this stuff especially at the end of the season and because this week uh, the witness is the challenge checkpoint, so people are, are going in there to do their uh, get their depth weapons, right? Um, so I figured if I can give away the CP to enough people, there will be more posts on LFG and Fireteam Finder because more people will have access to the witness. And you never know, somebody might join my fire team for the CP. They might be on comms. Maybe they're going to come in a raid team in a clan or something, and. Uh, and maybe they'll appreciate me giving them the checkpoint and they'll invite me um, or I can ask to be invited to, uh, to to see if I can help them out in some way, right? And so that's what happened eventually, right? After giving away the CP like maybe five, te five times, uh, a raid team, or I should say clan mates, there was three people that just popped into the fire team finder post. They were already on mic and uh, I'm just like, yeah, I'm just giving away the CP because I can't get it done. So at least, you know, maybe, Maybe some more posts will go on Fireteam Finder. Maybe I'll have some luck that way. And then it's like, oh, don't worry about it. We got you, right? And they literally, I'm not going to lie, they carried, they carried me, right? But I did hold my own. I actually, uh, with enough practice, managed to stop dying. And uh, they seemed to actually really appreciate the fact that I was on uh, speaker site on my Warlock. So I was constantly uh, dishing out healing turrets and popping a well down, right, for damage. And at this point, I was actually fairly efficient at damage. Like, I was doing average numbers with Microcosm and Supremacy, right? Uh, solar is surging for the week that I, that I got this done. Um, so if, as long as I'm on a Solar subclass, then Kinetic Weapons will get that 25% surge. Um, so that's pretty useful. And uh, Cenotath, until it gets its mark back, I wasn't going to run, right? I thought I, I thought I can run, like, pre-damage phase. I can run Cenotath and then four damage phase. Um, I would run uh, speaker site, right? Uh, but Cenotath doesn't mark, so um, I just stayed on speaker site, and 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 my teammates were uh, they were loving the fact that I was just able to hear, heal them all all the time. And it still took us a few tries, but we got it done, right? Um, so I'm sure most of you for, are familiar with this build, uh, but basically it's uh, I was just running two setups, right? So I just swapped for damage phase. Uh, for this build actually you know what I ended up just I stopped swapping entirely because I realized I was kind of dying what like not during swapping but it was just um, it was it was just kind of ruining my awareness like my in-game immersion every time I swap loadouts and it would just kind of interrupt the flow and I ended up just because um, my damage wasn't like super optimal anyways I ended up just uh, running one build no swaps, time dilation, one copy of Kinetic Surge, one Scav Surge, Recuperation, uh, Double Solar Damage Resist and Concussive, and then Kinetic and Void Loader. The reason I'm running a Void Weapon here instead of a Solar is because I want to shoot to loot an Explosive Payload, um, and we have Void Shielded Scorn uh, Chieftains, right? So it's kind of nice to be able to pop their shields very fast. Uh, unless you're using like a rocket sidearm. If you're using a legendary primary weapon, you, you're gonna struggle to break those shields unless it's void, right? Um, so yeah. Then obviously, uh, ashes and char for setting off ignitions uh, with my celestial fire, I suppose, but really the, the bread and butter of the build here is Ember of Solace and Ember of Benevolence with Touch of Flame healing grenades. Um, so this allows me to an Icarus dash for the mobility of being able to dodge the witness's attack um, and leave the damage plate uh, in time to you know to again dodge that final slam from the witness. Right? You if you wanted to, you can run Helion, benefit more from Char and Ashes. But I just thought that 
Uh, Icarus Dash, especially for the witness, would be invaluable. Um, Touch of Flame gives you restoration times two on those healing grenades, right? On, and on those healing turrets from Speaker Sight, the restoration lasts longer. And then every time I heal my teammates through my turrets, through Celestial Fire, through my Well of Radiance, um, then, uh, or sorry, my Phoenix Dive, not Celestial Fire, right? Phoenix Dive gives cure, healing grenades gives cure and resto. Uh, those turrets, same thing. So I'm constantly giving that out to my teammates, which means I have like 400% uptime on all of my abilities, right? So I could just spam more and more support, right? So that's how you could do uh, something that you don't think you could do, right? If you don't think you, you can hold your own against the witness, uh, just go on a full support class and see if you can help people out, right? See if you can get some good karma to come your way by putting up fire team finder posts, giving out the checkpoint. Right. Okay, so I finally got the witness done and I thought the rest would be easy. Actually, you know what I thought? I thought was uh, if I just complete the witness checkpoint, that would give me, I'd be able to complete the challenge. I'd get my rank 11, right? Because it just says um, for Salvation's Edge Mastery, complete the raid on Master Difficulty. It doesn't tell you to complete every encounter, it just says complete the raid. So I thought, I could just, you know, complete the witness encounter and be done. Unfortunately, this was not, it was not uh, selectable yet, right? I had not completed it, and so I realized I had to do every encounter on Master. So like I said, I already done the first and third encounters multiple times to farm those adepts. Uh, so I just had Herald of Finality to do and Verity, right? So I thought, well, this is going to be, it can't, there's no way it could be harder than the witness. Well, Herald was pretty darn hard. So, um... I'll go back to my Titan here because I did everything else on my Titan, uh, Verity and Herald. I, I think I'm better off on my Titan being a Titan main. So I'll talk about Verity first because I finished with Herald and I'm going to go into Herald gameplay, right? So uh, this is my Herald build here and then I ran uh, Verity. So what I did for LFG on these ones was I bit, a lot of people are posting on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, you can find people doing the master second encounter, master fourth encounter, right? And worse comes to worse, if you can't find somebody, if you can't find the master second CP, um, then you could join a fresh raid, fresh master raid. You've only got to get through the traversals and the first encounter, and then you're on the second encounter, right? Um, but for Verity, I ended up finding a team that was looking for uh, somebody, right? Uh, and one thing that you might want to note if you're looking on the LFG app or Fireteam Finder, uh, things that you uh, like posts that are really good to join if you can get in there fast enough, right? So if you see a post where they're just looking for one or two players, right? It's not like, you know, they're looking for a whole fire team. Chances are they've already got a fire team put together. Uh, and they could all be friends. They could all be a coordinated team. They could be in a clan, right? And they're just looking for a couple of ads, right? You being the ad, you being the additional team member uh, to their core team, right? Um, so anytime you can hop on a fire team finder that's just looking for like one or two players, that's usually a pretty good bet. Um, and it'll also be, it'll be good if you join a team like that because they're gonna be communicating right and then you can communicate with them you can ask questions you can uh, everything works way more fluidly in raids obviously if people are communicating if there's a if there's a strong leader um, right as opposed to joining an LFG team where every single person is random and nobody is taking the lead on uh, being like at least leading in communication right that doesn't mean they have to be the best player it doesn't mean they have to know the most right so this is how like I lead sometimes in LFG posts um, is I just try to be a, com good, a good communicator, right? If everybody can be on the same page in communication, then you can get stuff done pretty easily, right? That goes way further than having every player be individually uh, a god tier at the game, right? If nobody's communicating properly, you're just it's just not going to work. Anyways, so uh, I joined a Verity team, and there was four of them. They were already in a raid team together or three of them I think right so there was just like me and two other people that were uh, additional so this was pretty good I'm good at communication and verity anyways and being on my Titan build there's obviously more unstoppables so I just went with my assassin scars build you can consecrate the uh, the unstops so you can use the call I just made myself a dedicated uh, solo room player because I, I knew that I can manage everything by myself um, 
being the Titan. Uh, so we got this, we got Verity done on Master uh, pretty easily, right? So um, then, oh, I don't need to change character. Then for uh, Harold, this took me almost as long as the Witness uh, through different fire team fire, fire uh, through different fire teams. <clears throat> but um, yeah, this eventually got it done, right? And so I put together this build. Uh, earlier in the week thinking that this could be good versus uh, Harold, right? Um, obviously Harold is a melee based boss so you can use a sword, you can use a, any kind of melee build really, uh, but swords are very good against him, he's a skinny target, he moves around all over the place, you can just, you know, just use a sword, that's what people do, right? Um, so I went into a few fire team uh, posts and it was it was failures. It was just like nobody was communicating. I was even in one team that was communicating very well, but just people were just dying too much, not doing enough damage. Um, and if that if that's going on like for an hour consistently and like you're not getting any progress, just leave. Like it's not going to work with that team. Don't waste your time. You can literally stay there all night. And uh, somebody else is going to burn out before you and leave, and then somebody else is going to leave. It's going to be a chain reaction of people leaving the fire team finder, and nothing gets done, right? Uh, but I knew this build was working because I was doing like top DPS uh, pretty much all the time. So uh, Spirit of Eternal Warrior and Star Eaters, right? That way I have Void Weapon Boost times four for the entire damage phase, and I have Feast of Lights times six with my Twilight Arsenal, right? And I have a Relentless Strikes Whirlwind Blade Sword. Uh, this gets the most amount of benefit from Wolfpack rounds from the Ergo Sum, right? So as long as somebody's rocking Ergo Sum, uh, those Wolfpack rounds are gonna are gonna go a long ways with Roll and Blade, right? But regardless, you with Relentless Strikes you can get ammo back, right? Um, so it means that you can take out the elites that spawn uh, after you uh, force fail the uh, the charges, right? Before before damage phase to go to uh, to go to the middle to shoot the herald in the head uh, you have to kill those elites very fast um, in order to save time especially on the second phase or third phase if you have to three phase because uh, you're gonna have less and less time so yeah you're you're gonna want to use your heavy weapon you're gonna want to use your your best abilities on those elites just to, just to to not fail the encounter right even if it means having less damage output during damage phase you need to take care of those elites so relentless strikes it's going to save you ammo in the long run. Um, but yeah, basically the way I got it done on Herald through Fireteam Finder was uh, I ended up just joining one of those Fireteam Finder posts where they were just looking for two people. So again, I was an ad and this was a clan of four people, right? They weren't exactly um, super, super friendly, but they were communicating well enough, right? So this was fine for me. I just kind of, you know, just kept my comms to a minimum um, and uh, and we ended up getting the Herald done in like three tries right maybe or it was probably a lot, quite a bit more than that but we got through about three damage phases and then we just got better and better um, and so we probably in total spent less than 40 minutes on Herald so uh, I was fine with that got it done um, but yeah so let me I'll go into the gameplay and I'll talk about the build a little bit more but just so you can see you're here real quick as far as the abilities Twilight Arsenal like I said thruster uh, frenzy blades for triple consecration glacial grenade for protection like basically to have a uh, like a standing uh, uh, route like a tower and barricade but you know one that could also be shattered and do dark damage and build up transcendence faster to complement my light damage from consecration so I can just naturally build up transcendence protection no brainer fast of the dawn uh, to get that radiant in case you're you know just to supplement radiant orbs um, facet of courage to do more damage uh, to severed enemies or frozen enemies um, and then uh, facet of purpose here just so I can get a void over shield every time I pick up orbs and then facet of balance for slightly more consecration energy because I'm not running in most light uh, so this is going to be helpful for, uh, you know, clearing ads, taking care of the elites, and uh, just making sure that I can stay alive to ping pong the plate back and forth. Um, other weapons here, uh, Rufus Fury for taking care of overloads and doing dark damage to supplement all of the light damage that I'm doing through Buried Bloodline, uh, through my Consecration, and then through my main uh, ad clear weapon, Buried Bloodline. 
uh, which is supplementing the fact that I'm not using like Assassin, not using the most light to proc more knockouts. I'm using just a pure DPS damage uh, exotic here with Stoicism, right? Eternal Warrior and Star Eater, that's not giving me any neutral game benefit. So I'm using Berry Bloodline to complement my neutral game by giving me Devour, right? Um, and then, like I said, for the sword here, Relentless Strikes and Whirlwind Blade, you can use a Falling Guillotine, like I've got one with Vorpal and Whirlwind. I do not have one with Relentless Whirlwind, but I do. I think that Geodetic does more impact damage than uh, Falling Guillotine. Like, I, I think it has uh, 70 impact versus 64 impact on Falling Guillotine, right? So that's actually, uh, that's actually pretty interesting, right? So unless it's an Adept Sword, then uh, Geodetic is one of the best uh, in the game and it's adaptive so I think adaptives do slightly more damage than falling guillotine hence why I was always you know I was pretty much always top damage um, as you'll see in the gameplay I'll show some of the numbers but yeah so let's go into the gameplay Iggy, you're taking triangles. Okay, you can send when you're ready.
got uh, circle. We got circle. Okay, it's time to Susie get there. Nice! Oh my god. Good save. Fucking go. 